Welcome back to my whiteboard. I'm Kevin Dorma. This is part six of the control series. We will look at cascade control and demonstrate why it may fail where the process is operated at different rates. Let's consider the example in part three with heat exchanger temperature control, except with the cascade system. Let's suppose there was an unexpected drop in the hot oil supply pressure. This would cause a sudden drop in the hot oil flow rate. But because the temperature controller provides the flow set point, the hot oil flow controller takes action to maintain the desired hot oil flow rate. The primary temperature controller is tuned relatively slowly, and the secondary flow controller is tuned more quickly to ensure that the required resources are available. But what if the supply pressure is steady, like the discharge pressure from a centrifugal pump? Does cascade control provide a benefit? We will assume that the flow control valve is equal percent. Part 3 demonstrated that an equal percent valve was well suited for temperature control. As well, equal percent valves are often specified by default. For an equal percent valve, there is a small change in flow when the valve is nearly closed and a large change in flow when the valve is nearly full open. We saw from the discussion of process gain that the flow gain is high for low oil flow rates and the gain is low at high flow rates. We will tune the controllers to work well together at normal rates. Then the process flow rate will be reduced by a factor of three. This will cause the gain on the heat exchanger to increase by a factor of three and the gain on the flow control valve to decrease by a factor of three. Let's see how a reduction in flow rate impacts the reliability of this control loop. Here is the heat exchanger temperature control example, but implemented with a cascade control scheme. The outer or primary loop is temperature control. The PID controller is tuned for a 20 second response time. The controller output provides the set point for the inner loop, the flow controller. The inner loop is tuned for a four second response time. The PV lines are red and dark blue for temperature and flow. Controller outputs are green and yellow. The temperature set point is black. The control response is excellent. There are no oscillations. This is a functional team of PID controllers. Now we will mimic cutting the process flow to one third of the previous value. Before we look at these two loops working together, Let's look at the response for each of these loops working independently. First, the temperature controller. The temperature controller is quite a bit faster than we designed for, but it is still stable. It responds in about 10 seconds. Now for the flow controller. The flow controller also responds in about 10 seconds. Now we can see how these two loops work together. At the lower flow rate, everything is oscillatory. By themselves, each controller was able to manage the change in process behavior. However, the interaction with the other controller causes fighting. This use of a temperature flow cascade for heat exchanger control is not very robust. 
we see that a temperature flow cascade for heat exchanger control, where an equal percent valve is used, becomes unstable at low flow rates. This is because the two controllers respond in similar times and begin to fight with each other. This is an example of an inappropriate use of a cascade control loop. This concludes the whiteboard series on process control. I'm Kevin Dorma. Please visit my website at www.kevindorma.ca. Take care.